Ladies and gentlemen, it's currently January 2023 and the entire world is captivated by the Mittens Chess Bot. Nobody can figure out what this thing is and how to take care of it. Until now. In this video, I'll be showing you two games that I played yesterday against Mittens and I actually managed to defeat it. Now you might say, Gotham, how is that possible? You're a garbage chess player and I would say that's not very nice. Here's how I did it. Uh, I teamed up with Stockfish. Now, you might say, oh, well, that, well, that's cheating. Not quite. I alternated moves with Stockfish throughout the game, and I thought, while well, Stockfish is only a little bit better than Mittens, maybe by 100 points, I am 800 points lower rated than Mittens. Folks, this took me six hours. When I tell you I had to play Mittens like 10 times and I kept losing, even with the help of Stockfish, I am not exaggerating. But I managed to win one game, and it feels so good. Now, obviously, when you play humans, don't alternate your moves with Stockfish. But this is Mittens. It's a horrible robot. It needs to be eradicated. This was so difficult, and I'm very excited to share the results with you folks. But first, a massive announcement. Give me like 30 seconds of your time. You can jump ahead if you want. Give me 30 seconds of your time. Folks, I just launched my best chess course ever. The 50 Middle Games Masterclass. Link is in the description. This is my website. This is not like some sponsor. This is my website, all my courses. This is a ten, nearly 10 hours of video on how to improve at your middle games and you get a full free sample chapter. All right, that's all I have to say. Link is in the description. All of this is free. A giant chapter on how to make a plan. Uh, we've been waiting for this course for months and uh, I'm super pumped. And um, this will help you improve at middle games. It will not help you beat mittens. It will still destroy you, uh, but go check it out. You get a massive like two hours almost of free content. And uh, yeah, and there's also other free stuff on there as well. Now. Oh, folks, this was hard. This was a very, very, very hard day. I battled Mittens with white, with black. So first, I'm going to show you this game to, to prove to you that, like, while I did cheat, you know, cheat in the traditional sense, like with Stockfish, I still managed to screw up so many games. So the first game I played with Stockfish Infused, um, we played a Rosalimo, um, and I actually chose the opening. Uh, then we got to this position, and then here, Stockfish recommended that we play H4. Uh, this was not my idea. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know what to play, uh, you know, in these openings. Um, and then uh, and then D5, and then um, and then H5. And so the, the point is that White traded off a light squared bishop, and now puts a bunch of pawns on light squares, and also tries to restrict the opponent's development. It's absolutely fascinating stuff. And the reason why Black doesn't go like this and be like, well, now you can't castle anymore, is because black gets a completely horrible pawn structure. Two pawn islands, doubled isolated pawns, as you can see there, the advantage is very much in white's favor. Now, uh, yeah, black played f6. I mean, this was a super insane game. And from this point forward, I will be guiding you on alternating moves between, you know, myself and Stockfish. So Stockfish here goes bishop d2. I don't understand that move. Like, a lot of this was practice on understanding what the engine wanted from me, which is why, actually, I don't think it's that ridiculous to make a video where you alternate moves with an engine, just not, you know, rated games against humans. So, you know, G takes H6 was played, and I thought, well, Stockfish wanted me to go here so that I would play Queen C1. Now, as you notice, the eval plummets. <laughs> I thought, well, you know, Queen C1, and then I take, no, Stockfish just developed a piece for no reason uh, with Bishop D2, and, you know, then E5, and then we took. Bishop 2 E6 was played. Uh, and then, um... And then bishop takes f8, knight f8, and queen to d2. Now, that I, I played that move myself, which is why the evaluation dropped by 50% again. I just, I didn't really know what to do here. Rook g8, and now Stockfish insisted that we play knight h4. Uh, black played rook b8. Now, this move I can solve on my own, just pawn to b3. Actually, top choice of Stockfish as well. My pawn was under attack. And also, I continue to put pawns on light squares to counteract my opponent's light squared bishop. So, queen to d6. Now Stockfish plays the move knight e2. Uh, I would never play that move in a million years. I don't understand that move at all. Uh, I would imagine it's to go knight g3, knight, knight f5, or knight h5. Uh, now, this next sequence of moves was very simple. Mittens took. I took. It went queen takes d2, and you don't have to be an idiot to understand that you need to take back a queen uh, with, you know, when, uh, when they take your queen. And we got the following position. I was like, okay, well, Stockfish and I are just going to grind this down. I mean, how hard can this be? You know, it's, I didn't know the evaluation. Again, I'm only looking at the moves that Stockfish recommends. And one more thing, I'm not looking at the future moves. If you ever look at a computer, it'll be like, oh, this is the best move and then the next four moves. 
I hid that. So all it was doing was showing an arrow, that's it. So when I was looking at the engine, it was just like this. And that's all I knew. I just knew the best move. I didn't know the evaluation. Um, and I, and I, I did that deliberately because I don't like lying to you guys. Like I clickbait with my, with my titles and whatnot, but I don't like lying. I'm never gonna make content where I just lie to you. Like, oh, I beat Mittens fair and square. Like, no. And some, uh, some people have beat Mitten, defeated Mittens, but that was, there was like a period of time Mittens was nerfed. They were playing with its levels. And yeah, that's actually just a fluke. It's like 3,300. Um, long story short, I played the move F3 here, uh, and I wanted to play G4. Stockfish didn't like the move F3. It thought it was an overcommitment. Stockfish preferred knight G3, knight F5. Um, but you know, I'm a human, so I was like, me push pawn, me push pawn. Uh, and that allowed Mittens to play H5 and create a pretty good defensive setup. But the thing for black is there's very little pawn mobility. Almost none of the pawns can move since white controls most of the pawn play uh, and it's a pretty close position and this bishop is sort of out of commission. You'll see that bishop basically does not participate in the game whatsoever. Uh, white uh, is doing very well. So rook d1 takes takes. Knight g6 and um, we traded and I played g3 and Stockfish played rook h1 and then uh, and then c uh, c4 and i thought okay we, we're gonna have like we have to win this game i mean there's just absolutely nothing black can do then it dawned on me this is actually significantly harder than i'm expecting even though it's plus 1.6 which is showing now black still has plenty of counterplay and black's black is completely defended i mean and and and, and the other thing is you got to think about like what are you trading and at what moment for instance if white just rushes with f4 all the advantage is gone just one move because black is gonna get sufficient counterplay. So I played knight c3, my idea of knight c3, two ideas. Knight a4, forcing king d6, and knight d1, knight e3, knight f5. I thought knight c3 was very clever. Stockfish thinks it's one of the best moves. Then we did not allow the rook to enter. The rook planted itself on d4, and we forced this position. But here, I still did not know how to break through at all. And I mean, I'm terrified. I'm playing mittens. I'm playing mittens with my older brother watching, but you know, Stockfish only gives me a hint every now and then. Now, Stockfish played f4, and I thought, okay, I got it, Mittens went here, and here I had a moment, I was like, what does Stockfish want? Does it want me to take? And I calculated, you know, F, E, King, E5, Knight, C5, Bishop, E4, Rook, H5, check, all the stuff I calculated. And then I was like, wait a minute, I'm playing with Stockfish, right? So this is how Stockfish actually helped shape my thought process. I was like, I think Stockfish would like to restrict Black's pieces. That is the way it plays. It suffocates to death its opponent, like a snake. And that's why I played f5, and it liked it. And then Stockfish played rook g1. And then here I was like, well, I want to go g4, um, but I'm a little bit concerned about this, 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 rook d1. Like, as a human, I don't want to allow the infiltration of this rook because there's nothing here. I mean, I, I think just king e7, and then the rook runs wild even though I take the pawn. Now, naturally, you know, as a human, I played the move knight c3 first, and my advantage dropped. All right, Stockfish thought I was an idiot. Stockfish was like, bro, I played rook g1 in order for you to play g4. But as a human, I was scared. I thought if I rush, the, the enemy rook is going to infiltrate, so I would rather come back and block d1. And Stockfish was like, well, you're an idiot, all right? And uh, King E7, now it forces this, and we have the following position. Now, we're still better. We're still pushing the issue here, but maybe a lot of our advantage has disappeared because uh, Mittens is going to be able to get its king back. Uh, the rook, not the king. You see, this is why we needed to rush in this position, because if we had gotten here, now I can take... You see, bringing the knight back to c3, preventing rook d1, enabled king e7. So I was actually too cautious, and now black gets a decent defensive setup. Um, now, Mittens chucks a pawn. It sacrifices a pawn here and goes for counterplay. Uh, and in this position, I actually was very proud. I, I created this really nice setup where I'm up a pawn, but it's not so clear. I mean, I, like, you know, we're pressuring, but it's not so clear. Now here... Uh, I did something Stockfish liked again. I threatened the trade of rooks. Now, this is a threat because if rook d3, knight d3, I think white has pretty good winning chances here. And the idea would be to run the king back, push the pawns, and then create a passer, etc., etc. And I thought, okay, well, Mittens didn't trade rooks with me, so that must be smart. And Stockfish gave me the blessing. Now we have a4. And now the idea is going to be bringing the king back to the middle because right now our king is cut off. We cannot rush with moves like knight b7. Because even if we win a second pawn, uh, we're going to lose this one, and then we're going to lose this one, and I just thought that was a little bit too spicy for me. 
Uh, so I decided to very slowly and methodically bring my king back and stockfish approved. And then I thought, well, you know, I'm going to make sure this rook cannot see my pawn anymore. And I'm going to offer a rook trade. I offered a rook trade, not stockfish. Because, well, mittens didn't trade rooks with me once, right? Draw. This game took like 40 minutes, okay? This video is 10 minutes long right now. I spent so long on this game because I thought this was the game. I thought this was the game that we're going to finally... I'm going to get a win against Mittens. I, I, no. Do you know what the difference between the two Rook trades was? It's very subtle. It's the fact that the A pawn hasn't moved. That's it. The fact that I still preserve the right to break through on the Queen side in a different way. But because of this, because I, I just absentmindedly was like, well, the Rook is going to go away, and then I'm going to bring my King, and then we're going to win. No. The point is that now I cannot move my pawns because I, I, Stockfish committed to move a4 because Stockfish is better than me and I screwed everything up. So even though I used Stockfish this game, I didn't win. And you say, Levy, you said you won. That, yeah, this was the, this is what I'm saying. Like, there were so many games like this. There was games we played where it was plus three and it was a very sharp position and I messed everything up. Until now. By the way, seriously, check out the middle game scores. I mean, it's, Amazing. It's 50% off right now. All courses, 50% off. Just, I don't know if I said that in the intro. Seriously. Everything is 50% off. Um, <clears throat> go check it out. So, uh, we played white, and, and you might say, why didn't we play with black? It's impossible to win with black. I mean, like, I, I really tried. Guys, when I tell you, the, this video might be 25 minutes long. It took me six hours to make this video. I really hope you're not sitting there like, you use Stockfish, that doesn't count. I literally told you in the first 20 seconds of this video, you Stockfish. Really, you are not Sherlock Holmes, okay? I cannot beat Mittens on my own. But it was very hard, and it was, ex it was a big challenge to even beat it, getting every other move from Stockfish. Oh my god. Now, Mittens, the scumbag that it is, plays my favorite opening against me. I mean, this is Snape Harry. All right, Half-Blood uh, Prince, you dare use my own spells against me, Porter. Rest in peace, by the way, Alan Rickman. Um, D4, D5, E5. I gotta play my E4 course, which is also 50% off, by the way, and the entire first chapter of the Vienna Gambit is free. You would know that if you checked out my courses. Uh, and I played H4. This is all my course. This is all course prep. I'm using my own course against Mittens. And by the way, I'm not even using Stockfish yet, all right? This is all prep, all prep, Knight C3. And now Mittens plays a very aggressive line. I mean, in general, what Black wants to do to bust up white center is to play c5, e6, and so on. Mittens plays h5. This is, um, the point of this is to give away a pawn, but activate the rook with pressure and basically just argue that white's pawns are stupid, like they're double, they're not, you know, and then, and then Black will oftentimes play e6 and just very slowly break this apart. But Mittens plays c5. So Mittens gives away two pawns just like for nothing and then plays e6 and is like, all right, we're going to do this this way. Um, now, in this position, uh, I decided to play knight f3. Now, in hindsight, it probably would have been smarter to just guard the pawn, but I was a little bit worried about like knight h6, knight f5, which Stockfish just very promptly thinks is very stupid. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to give away the pawn. And then, um, rook g1, right? So rook g1 played, and uh, now, now, now I go back to screwing up the position. So here Stockfish has various plans for white. Now I thought, well, you know, I, I need to be a good influence to my audience, so I need to develop. Stockfish is like, you moron, why would you develop? <laughs> so Stockfish had a really funny plan here. Um, Stockfish plays knight c6, and then, it, it, you know, if I told you, like, just play a natural developing move here for white, a lot of you would go here, or a lot of you would go here, and I don't blame you. I would probably also play those moves, not Stockfish. Stockfish in this position plays queen d2, putting the queen in front of its own bishop. But I realized, after it suggested that, what its idea was. So Mittens has won its pawn back, right? But the idea of queen d2, and Mittens really did not understand how powerful white's position is, the idea is to play queen f4. You see, black has committed the king to the defense of these two pawns, so white counterintuitively brings the queen in front of its own pieces. 
delaying development for pressure. Black plays rook h8. Now I was like, all right, well, I understood queen f4 was the idea, but I don't see the, you know, as a human, I would play knight g5 here and, you know, lose all of my advantage, right? Well, Stockfish goes queen d2, queen f4, queen g3, and queen g3, g6. Now, you guys see it's plus five. I did not see it was plus five. So in this position, I probably played my proudest move of this entire video. Um, if you look at this position, right? And by the way, there is a chapter on sacrifices in my middle games course. This looks really appealing. When to sacrifice. I, I, I mean, I'm selling, but I'm telling you, this is like very practical stuff. Um, and I really wanted to go bishop g6. And then, you know, fg, queen g6, this was in my mind. And I thought, okay, I'm mating. But after queen e7... Just the fact that black's king is open is insufficient. If I try to continue my attack, black will simply try to trade queens. In fact, that forces a queen trade. And you cannot sacrifice material like this unless you have two more attacking pieces than they have defenders, and you don't. White has two attacking pieces right now. Black has like five defenders around the king. So I was sitting there like, I don't understand how we're going to break through. And then I realized... You make the idea bishop g6 possible with the move h5. When I played this move, I think Stockfish squealed. The point is that pawn takes h5, queen g7. But if h5, rook h5, now bishop g6 works. Because after bishop takes, f takes, queen takes, it's not just queen g7 that's a threat that can be covered. It's this and this. I've lured the rook out. So I enable more targets. I was so proud of this move h5, and now we begin busting open black's position. But this game is still hilarious, okay? Takes, takes, queen g6, and in this position, I find the move bishop e3. Now watch the eval. My move cuts our advantage in half, from plus six to plus three. But I had an idea with bishop e3, two ideas. Number one, after this, this, we get the f file for the rook. I thought that's, you know, logical. Peace trades is chapter 9 of the middle games course. All right. The other idea was I want to castle long. So rook c8. Uh, and now Stockfish plays the best move, which is knight g5. It, it wanted to play knight g5 here. But like I said, I didn't look at Stockfish every move. Bishop b4. And then here it was up to me. And I found a very nice idea. My original idea was just to castle. But I found rook g4 with the idea to play rook f4. And I was like, wait, we're just checkmating. Like the game is over. <laughs> no, rook c4 defensive move. I did not see that move at all. Uh, now we trade rooks and now I castled. And we castled because even though black can check us, there's nothing. And I mean, mate is just unstoppable. So black plays rook h6. Uh, Stockfish goes queen e4. And now folks, when I tell you I'm trying to play this game like a human, what would a human do here when it's playing a bot or just any good player? Win pawns, trade pieces. Win pawns, trade pieces. Go to an endgame, up three pawns. Your opponent can never beat you. Stockfish doesn't think that way. Stock, you're about to see what Stockfish thinks. Stockfish doesn't think in the way that's like, oh, I need to trade pieces and win an endgame. Stockfish wants to take its opponent's soul. Okay? So in this position, I took the pawn. And my logic was we're going to trade queens, and I'm going to be up two or three pawns in an endgame, and we're going to win. All right? Bishop e8. I'm like, yo, Stockfish, let's trade queens. Stockfish goes here. What? I was so mad because I was so scared of losing. I was like, Stockfish, you absolute scumbag. Like, we could have taken this pawn too. We could have been up three pawns in an endgame. We have five to two. Like, how are we not winning here? Stockfish is unsatisfied. Stockfish is like, nope, queen c8. Take, take, king h8. All right. Now here, Stockfish plays knight e4, rook g6. And here I played an easy move. Easy move. I just gave a check. I was like, Stockfish, I don't know what you want. And folks... Knight d6, right? Bishop f7. We want another pawn. I'm like, all right, Stockfish, trade the queens. Please trade the queens. Queen b7. Now, queen b7 is the top engine move. It's plus eight. If you go here, it's only plus four. So Stockfish plays queen b7. I'm like, Stockfish, please. I'm going to screw this up, man. I've screwed up games for the last like five hours. Please, Stockfish. So knight e7. I play knight d6. I'm like, okay, queen trade is forced. It's forced. You know, he's going to go here. We're going to trade queens, trade like this. Boom. We're going to be up three pawns. Queen C Do you guys want to know what Stockfish played here? I almost lost my damn mind. Stockfish in this position took the knight. Losing the rook. I was like, nah, 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 nah. Stockfish, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Look what Stockfish is doing. Queen H1. It allowed. I was like, no, please. Oh, my God. My king is going to get mated somehow. Stockfish, please make it stop. 
But then bishop g5. Just a cage on the black king. You see, I would have played knight e8 as a human. That's what I would have done. And then I would have gone here, but there's no win. There's just no win. I mean, you can go here, and there's a win in the long run. You have like four extra pawns. But I was really worried I would blunder my king somehow. Like, I, I, you know, I, it was... But bishop g5 is the cage, and then bishop f6. And then from this point forward, I played alone. I played alone. Um, it was terrifying, but I gave a check. I won a pawn, and I thought, you know what? It, I'm up four pawns. All that it has is this. All I got to do is defend that. So check, we block, and that's it. I mean, I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to beat Mittens. Now, it's not impressive to beat a bot up four pawns, especially when that bot has literally no play. Um, but the nice defensive setup here, knight d3 defended like this, and it's actually even more nasty. You put the knight on b4, so your pawn is defended. This is all defended, and that's it. Everything is defended. Literally nothing in white's position. And now, Mittens gets a taste of its own medicine, as look at how many moves forward I make. Knight b4, queen d4, f4, a4, c4, c5, king b3 defending my pawn, c3 defending my queen, c6 advancing, and then I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win a5, a6, a7, queen. Sacrifice the queen for the bishop. Simplify. You don't have to do that. Just make sure you don't stalemate. C7. And folks, I've been around the block. I know how to checkmate with a ladder. Two queens. And the big moment. Check, check. Oh, this felt good. I gotta tell you, I probably played more than half of the moves in this game alone. Why? Because I knew the opening, all right? This was this is all in my, my E4 course. I've, I've played this opening many times, like right around here. I, I handed it over to Stockfish to uh, play Rook G1 and so on. Um, and then this idea, I would never play. I mean, ever in a million years. I would never play Queen D... I mean, maybe in a long game, but not in a Blitz game. But this was my proud moment. Right here, completely on my own, to realize Bishop G6 is wrong and to find this key H5 move. And... Um, this is the pawn play chapter of the middle game. I'm just, this is not supposed to be promoting the course completely. Um, but yeah, uh, this is the way I was able to beat Mittens. Now, again, I have mentioned many times in this video that I did not beat it on my own. I would not lie to you all. Uh, I am not that kind of person. But folks, when I, when I tell you like this took 10 games, that's not an exaggeration. I was getting so frustrated. I was sitting here and I should have saved some of the games that I lost and I thought they did save when I click new game, but they don't always save for some reason. And I, I actually asked chess.com if they could find those games. Uh, they, I, I don't know if they can, um, but uh, there were so many games where we were slowly grinding. Stockfish would build us a three point advantage and then I would make a move and it would be zeros again. And I, oh my God, folks, it took so long. I mean, this thing is really, really strong. Uh, it was nice to be able to beat it because Mittens, let's say is 3,300. Stockfish is like 30, you know, 5, 3,600, and I'm like 2,400. I am like 1,000 points away from Mittens. So it was nice to be able to consistently put pressure on it and not let it get away. But, I mean, the way Stockfish played that game, not, get, not trading and anything, oh, that was terrifying. I thought I was going to screw it up. Anyway, Mittens has been defeated, kind of, sort of, not really. But um, that was nice. It was a lot of fun. And right now, Mittens is in a big battle versus this Megan bot on Chess.com. I don't know if you guys have checked lately, but... The Megan bot, based on some movie or something, it's like destroying all the cat bots and now it's battling mittens. Probably make a video about that as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was very fun, very satisfying for me. Uh, I mean, admittedly, you cannot use Stockfish in your own games uh, because then I would be world champion. But uh, yeah, it was, it, it was very fun to do this. It was a big challenge. It was a lot of stress. I had to really focus because um, in the time it takes Stockfish to make a good move in half a second, you know, I got to spend like 20 minutes on the same move. Anyway, uh, if you're still here after 24 minutes, Middle Games course launched today. It's our newest course. Uh, it's uh, the first course that I've made in probably like a year and a half. And um, it's a very high quality product, really. Do me a favor, check it out. It's all my site. It's not a sponsored site. It's my site, all my courses. All have free samples. Free. You can just go and check it out for yourself. And uh, that's all I got to say. I will see you in tomorrow's video. Get out of here.